Hey, this is Austin Harmon Mixes here. I would like to invite you to like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out a lot whenever I get to see all of the support, comments, and questions that you leave down in the comment section. It really helps me engage with you guys and develop content that's specifically for you. This video that you're about to see was actually asked for by one of the subscribers of this channel. So thank you very much, and I hope this is helpful for you. Hey, Austin Harmon Mixes here. Thank you for joining us today for this discussion on compression. Compression is one of the most important tools that you can use behind the desk. And today I'm gonna to summarize how I approach using compression. Today we're gonna to walk through the vocal chain that I use for live sound. Now, when we talk about vocal chain, we're talking about the order of processing that we would use on any given vocal. And today I'm showing you a show file that was mixed this morning. I'm preparing for our evening service. So I'm gonna walk through each of the settings which will subsequently get changed in time for the show. Now on the DLive up across the top here, we have some tabs, one of which is called overview. Then we have preamp, we have filter, we have gate, we have inserts, pre-EQ, which means parametric EQ, sorry. Compression, insert B, and delay. Now, for the purposes of this video, let's focus in on the compression for a second. Now, in a live environment, first and foremost, you have to contend with symbols. And we call this symbol bleed or metal bleed, whatever. There's a lot of different terms for it. But symbols are your own worst enemy because your vocal mics will pick up every single symbol that you have on stage. Sometimes vocal mics are referred to the world's best cymbal mics. Now there are several ways to combat this, but the reason why I bring this up is, is dialing in your compression can have a pretty big impact on how cymbals may actually affect your sound. Now here on the D-Live we have our compression settings. So first and foremost, let me walk through each one. This is just a standard baseline compressor where you have an attack, you have a release, you have a ratio, a threshold and a gain. Now on the D-Live we also have a source which allows us to kind of roll off uh, different elements of the sound to prevent it from being compressed but in this case that's not relevant let's just focus over here on the right hand side. Now let's start with each one of these. The attack if you think about a compressor what a compressor does is it controls the dynamic range of an instrument or insert okay so when we talk about dynamic range, a vocal specifically is the most dynamic instrument on the stage. A vocal has plus or minus 45 dB of dynamic range. So when we talk about dynamic range, that's how loud an instrument can be and how soft an instrument can be at any given time. If you think about it, a vocal could whisper. They could whisper into the microphone or they could yell into the microphone with full voice. And because of that, compression is an ideal way to control the variations in amplitude or volume. So when we talk about compression in a live environment, it's different than how we would look at compression in a studio environment. Oftentimes you will see tutorials out there that say, oh, just barely, barely hitting the compressor just so that we just get a nice little color and sound. Now in the live environment, that doesn't work because if you have a musician that screams into the mic, which they often do, or they'll sing a really quiet part, you don't really have the luxury of barely kissing a vocal mic when you're running 90, 95 dB. So how do we do this in a live environment? Well, first and foremost, let's talk about the basics of the compressor. You have an attack. This controls how quickly the compressor, compressor is going to engage. So what I like to do is I try to keep this attack if we're running really loud, underneath five milliseconds. And the reason for this is that five milliseconds is where it's perceptible to the human. So anywhere beneath five will generally uh, work for me. Now, these are just ranges. They're not ideal or perfect for every situation. So please 
try these things and figure out what works best for you. A slower attack is going to allow a lot more of the natural vocal to come through, somewhere in the 30 milliseconds range. This is more common in the studio environment, but in a live environment, this may cause challenge with being able to control the dynamic range of the instrument. So we're just going to leave this around uh, three to four milliseconds for now. Now the release is also a really important element of the compressor for a live situation. Because if you have a very fast release, the vocal is going to sound very, very dynamic. And in some cases, if you have too fast of a release, the vocal may sound like it's being chopped. If you imagine, if you watch my hands here, the vocal sound itself may kind of do this number, if you can imagine how that would sound, if it has too fast of a release. Now, if you're too slow, the vocal may sound muddy and it may sound very flubby and dead. Now again, this is live, this doesn't translate to the studio. When you've got a really loud PA, this is something that you have to consider. So I try and run between 100 and 200 milliseconds of release. If you have a really, really uh, dynamic set, like a, a rap artist, I would go for a faster release. And if you have a really dynamic, more legato vocal, I would go for a slower release. If you're having challenges with your vocal staying on top of the mix, try a slower release. <laughs> now next is the ratio. The ratio effectively defines how much compression happens. So you have a ratio and a threshold. If your source is higher than the threshold, it's going to be compressed by the ratio. So generally speaking, you're gonna see a three to one or three, B re three dB reduction for every uh, so many dB over your threshold or a four to one. Now, these have different characteristics of sound. I would recommend listening to how each one sounds on your vocal. A three to one ratio is gonna be a softer compressor, whereas a four to one is gonna be more aggressive. If you have a very dynamic artist that's doing a lot of screaming, a lot of jumping around, you may desire a higher ratio. Dial in your threshold to Generally, between 3 to 6 dB of gain reduction is where I like to hit here. So I'll start dragging down the threshold until I'm seeing between 3 and 6 dB of gain reduction. Okay? Now the final piece is called the out gain or makeup gain. Now in this case, for vocal, this is where you can start to get into trouble. A vocal, because it picks up all kinds of symbols on stage, the higher your out gain, the more cymbal bleed you're gonna introduce into your mix. What you'll find is, is that a lot of really big name shows and artists will say, don't use any out gain and barely compress, if at all, on the vocals. They can get away with that because they have a perfectly tuned PA and they have really great musicians. However, in most environments, we're not dealing with that luxury and therefore we have to use out gain at the expense of cymbal bleed. Generally speaking, I will try and target an outgain setting that's equivalent to whatever I'm reducing from a gain perspective. So if I'm minus three to minus six dB in gain reduction, I will try and have an outgain between three and six dB. Now, because I didn't mix this morning, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back at nine dB, but very likely when I do this vocal check, I will actually reduce this because this is gonna introduce quite a bit of bleed into the music. You also have to consider how this is gonna sound in the in-ear monitor mixes. If you have a tremendous amount of outgain, it may give the artist an unrealistic expectation of how loud they're actually singing. So in summary, a compressor is a very good tool to allow you to control the dynamic range of an instrument. The, all of the concepts that I talked about here will translate across all of the instruments on stage. The specific context here, though, is it's a focus on a vocal. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we discussed today. Please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe, and let me know how you're using your compressor.